So I begin by sketching lightly with my Palomino black wing, or what's left of it, very lightly, very loosely. As you can see, I hold my pencil towards the end of it, which prevents one from being too precise. And not all the lines are correct. I'm kind of just letting the pencil dance. I think there's general agreement that sketching from life is an excellent practice to improve one's artistic abilities. And I certainly have a long way to go in terms of drawing skills. So my main hope is just to encourage others in this practice. I'm going to set up my palette now. I'm painting these tiny fruits that I got at the French supermarket the other day. Starting with raw sienna. These are called fizzalis. I had never bought them before, but I'd seen them for sale in a square in Montreal of all places. These particular ones come from Peru and it's a fruit. Now I have no idea whether these are good or not because I've never had them before and I don't know what they're supposed to taste like and I know that this time of year especially in cold areas you're not going to necessarily find the best some sap green but to be honest, I wasn't that impressed. Maybe they're just not ripe. They are, however, absurdly pretty. Can't even tell you what they taste like. Kind of bland. They're the same families as tomatillos. All right, so I have sap green and raw sienna. I'm gonna start on the fruit itself with a little bit of gamboge, which is a warm yellow. I'm leaving some highlights. I'm using my Escoda Versatile brush, travel brush number six. The top goes into the bottom so that the fibers don't get ruined. And they are packed, see? Just like this. I'm going to add a tiny bit of orange, transparent, translucent rather, orange from Schmincke. Be like my little water pots that contained sheep's milk yogurt. That was my breakfast. And then a tiny bit of 
burnt sienna. So I'm still working wet on wet here. would like to keep the simplicity and the transparency of this beautiful fruit. And that's always a challenge for me because I like to go dark and also, as you know, watercolor dries lighter. I'm going to let this first layer dry. I mentioned wanting to keep this fresh, so I'm going to try and keep the layers to a minimum. Going in with a mixture of gamboge and translucent orange, the two colors I used earlier for the fruit. Then I'm going to add some blue to some um, burnt sienna to make it darker and I'm gonna do these stems and add some water there's some darker stem like things A little bit too dark and thick. Scraping them off a little and go back in with some of this raw sienna. And tiny touch of sap green. Again, that gamboge mix for the other two fruits. A little bit more. so nice and bright and shiny now, but you know how watercolor is. It's going to get lighter. This is just more raw sienna. some of that darker mixture of ultramarine and burnt sienna. Again, raw sienna mixed with some of the yellow fruit mixture. A bit of sap green. A bit of a darker mixture here. 
kind of moving from one part of the sketch to the other to give things a chance to break. I'm in a to dry. I'm in a warm, well heated room. So it's drying pretty fast. And while it dries, I use some of my shadow violet and I'm trying to look at the reflections here. I'm going to go straight with my brush. fun to draw with a brush. It's risky but it's only paper. I have to keep moving my eyes to kind of see where the shadows are. bit of green on this tip. And I think I'm gonna stop here. By the way, a French word for this fizzle is love in a cage, which is both sad and beautiful. <laughs>